Incredibly, the sparking by Governor Mark Sanford may be no match ultimately for the scandal of Senator John Ensign, which has tonight expanded to include a Christian group, a coerced letter, a kind of semi-senatorial kidnapping, and John Ensign Puppet Theater. Our third story in the countdown, the end of the affair with Cindy Hampton and the firing of Doug Hampton proved to be just the beginning of the headache for Nevada's junior senator, to say nothing of ruining forever that familiar July phrase here, summer in the Hamptons. Ensign's former best friend and co-chief of staff giving new details on the senator's extracurriculars with his wife. In a televised interview with the Las Vegas Sun, Doug Hampton says the senator's relentless pursuit of wife Cindy drove Ensign to fire both Hamptons. But first, a quick recap. Senator Ensign has an affair with Cindy Hampton, who worked on one of Ensign's political campaigns or committees. Doug Hampton finds out about the affair, and then the senator fires them both. Ensign admits to the affair at a news conference, resigns from his position within the Republican leadership. Meanwhile, Ensign's Parents write the Hampton family checks totaling $96,000, citing a pattern of generosity between the Ensign family and the Hamptons. Mrs. Hampton's generosity took a more non-monetary form. <laughs> Enter Ensign's God Squad, a group of men Hampton asked to confront Ensign. Ranking members, Senator Tom Coburn, along with Tim Coe, David Coe, and Marty Sherman, the latter three with The Family, a secretive group associated with the C Street Christian Fellowship. Hampton says these men encouraged Ensign to pay for the Hamptons' home and for their move to Colorado. Hampton also alleges that the four men urged the senator to write that letter to Cindy, breaking things off. With two of his religious protectors, then driving Ensign to FedEx to get the letter into the mail immediately. After the letter was indeed sent, Ensign gave Cindy Hampton a call, says, disregard this letter that's coming up about that stuff about using her for her own pleasure and his pleasure. And 24 hours later, Ensign is in uh, Las Vegas with Cindy, uh, in the biblical sense. To top it all off, when it was time to give Cindy the old heave-ho from her day job with Ensign, the senator could not do it himself. Doug Hampton says the family asked Cindy to leave, though Ensign managed to lower the ax on Hampton himself. He told me, basically at the same time he said, I'm in love with your wife, you can't work for me anymore. And since we don't have any visual imagery of any of the aforementioned activity described by Mr. Hampton, we return to the innovative new style of journalism we pioneered here, Senator John Ensign Puppet Theater. You have to stop this affair, Senator. You need to pay for Cindy and her family to move away. You owe them money. If you'd listen to me, none of this would have ever happened. Shut, Shut up, Coburn! And you need to write her a letter breaking it off. I'll do it this afternoon. You'll do it right now, young man. In fact, we're going to drive you to FedEx, and we're going to watch to make sure you send it to her. If you'd listen to me, none of this would have ever happened. Shut, Shut up, Coburn! <laughs> Does it absolutely positively have to be there tomorrow? Overnight, 10 blocks from here, and that'll be $227. If you'd listen to me, none of this would have ever happened. Shut up, Coburn. Can we stop at a Dairy Queen or something? Shut up, Coburn. Cindy, the mean men have made me write a nasty letter to you, and I don't mean it, and you should disregard it, and I'll always love you. Who is this? It's John. John Ensign. Senator John Ensign. Oh, sure. Did you send the 96000 yet? John. Cindy. John. Cindy. John. So, you want to go hiking on the old Appalachian Trail? Joining me now, political columnist for Bloomberg News and Washington Editor of the Week, Margaret Carlson. Good evening, Margaret. Good evening. This, uh, this stuff would embarrass, and I'm not referring to the puppets, uh, the, the whole story now would embarrass Mark Sanford. How on earth does Senator Ensign not resign? I think he does resign now. He, it looked like he had a pass, thanks to a fellow Republican, uh, Governor Mark Sanford, but there are now too many uh, aspects of this, too many things going on. Uh, the parents giving the, the $96,000, first of all, it makes him look childish, like he's being looked after by his parents. They're going to have a tax problem because you can't give away money um, as a gift with when you're getting something in return, which is the silence. And the details of the family are just too much to, to survive. 
the uh, the evolution of the story too, I imagine, is kind of fatal at this point. Is, is it not become as disturbing as the story itself? It started out with a little infidelity and apparently a quick admission and an apology. And the next thing you know, we have failed interventions and another senator involved and a Catholic or a Christian group and the mistress and the husband fired and this sort of you know quasi kidnapping and the, the FedEx letter and then the, the going out on the date the next day anyway. Hey, the Muppets, the Sesame Street's going to want royalties from you for your <laughs> puppet theater. Uh, it looked like he was going to get away with it because it was Las Vegas. He came back. The Republican caucus welcomed him. There was no talk of an ethics committee, no censure, no nothing. But when you have him being taken a hostage, and I don't mean to insult real hostages mm -hmm. here, but like at gunpoint to FedEx, you, you expect a tape with with Ensign holding up the newspaper so you know what date it is, and he's sending it overnight, and he actually did it. Um, it it's, it's like a preposterous yep. thing to have happen. By the way, you know, there's a Republican governor right now. I think he's up in 11, 2011. If, if, uh, if Republicans act now to move Ensign out, they get a chance to have a Republican senator appointed get a leg up on the next election mm -hmm. and i heard from republicans late today that that's what they want to do that now they're ready to move him out and have a chance at retaining that seat could this one though uh, have ramifications outside of uh, of of the the originator here of, uh, of of our friend senator ensign because of senator coburn's involvement in this and he's and he's citing privilege he said he spoke to ensign in his role as physician and ordained deacon aren't there implications for this too i mean it, it, where where does your role as say a us senator fit into this equation when you have so many different hats senator coburn is also an obstetrician in case anything <laughs> happened. Um, you know, there, there are tax liabilities. There's Senator Coburn who, you know, he and, the, he and President Obama have a lot to say to each other. They actually get, mm -hmm. get along. Senator Coburn is an interesting guy. However, <laughs> this is like too interesting. He cannot be this interesting. Um, he's got a lot of explaining to do. And you wonder, is this what they do for each other? Is this oh. what... Um, you know, the co collegiality has come to where you're forcing your guy to, yes. <laughs> to write the letter. I mean, it is. Yeah. And Ensign has been infantilized, if that's a word, you know, by Coburn and the family mm -hmm. and by his parents. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you can see him like I remember the nuns making this right. I, you know, I must sit down and be quiet a hundred times after school, and he's being forced to sit down there and write in fairly good penmanship, I might add, mm -hmm. in his own handwriting this letter with these people looking, looking over him and leaving nothing to chance. Yeah, and there and there's the nub of the gist here that if when when the senator finds his way into the Senate, his colleagues applaud because he's made it there successfully that on his own. That's that that's the ultimate problem here. Margaret Carlson of Bloomberg News and the Week magazine. Uh, as always, many thanks. Good night, Keith. And when Rachel joins you at the top of the hour, she will go inside C Street, Ensign's circle of religious associates with a reporter who infiltrated that group. Also, the report of somebody who infiltrated the Sarah Palin group, Levi Johnston, says the whole resignation story is cover. No, really? And thank you, President of Afghanistan. Marital rape, less legal. Marital forced starvation, more legal. Worst persons ahead on Countdown.